Hello, everybody. My name is Vivek Mano, and I'm a product specialist here at Ionic. And today, I'm going to dive into the world of super apps and how a storage company was able to consolidate eight separate individual apps in the App Store down to just a single one. We're talking about a multi-billion dollar public company that's best known for providing portable storage solutions around the world. Let's dive right in and see what they were up against. So some of the goals that the customer had were that they wanted to bring everything together in one main application. So they had disparate app experiences that existed everywhere for their different personas, like for drivers, field service personnel, repair techs, and even their partners. And what they had to do was find a way to gather the data from their SAP backend to deliver all this information in an easy to understand and digest way for all their personas. On top of that, they wanted to make sure that each user that logged in saw only the necessary mini apps that they needed to see for their persona. So whether you're a driver or an operations manager, your available apps will auto-populate based on their role. And they're looking to roll out about 20 to 25 different apps in total. And their goal is to make sure that app fixes and app updates can be provided every one to two weeks and pushed asynchronously. That allows them to scale their super app without having to rebuild that main shell app. We're gonna dive into what this all means. Um, but just to take a quick step back, super apps, where do they come from? What's going on in the marketplace? Well, fascinating to find out that one in three people worldwide use a super app today. And when we look at some of the more dominant super apps that exist, like WeChat or Alipay or Grab in Singapore, it's astounding to consider the fact that these apps are sitting at 2.4 billion monthly active users cumulatively. That's a third of the world's population using super apps. And what people expect are that in the next four to five years or so, we're gonna see a significant increase where we expect half the world's population or 4 billion people to be an active user of super apps by 2027. Now, what's leading to this technology trend or maybe this part of the hype cycle that we're seeing? is that super apps make it really convenient for users to get by in their day-to-day -day activities. By having a single super app that they can trust with their credentials, their payment information, customers gain access to a bunch of new services. So FinTech apps might offer additional loans along with delivery services and product purchases and future integrations by either that super app company themselves or partners make the customers feel more secure transacting within that app. Okay. We talked a little bit about some examples and what's going on in the marketplace, but what exactly is a super app? What are we talking about when we say super app? Now, the best explanation I've heard actually comes from our friends at Gartner, where they mentioned that a super app is an app that provides end users, that's customers, partners, and employees, with a set of core features within the app, but also access to independently created mini apps. There's no separate app store or marketplace for these mini apps, but they're discovered and activated by the users themselves. And once used, they can be easily removed from the UI. Now that's from Gartner's Executive Guide to Super Apps that just came out a few months ago. But we have to understand that a super app is typically built as a platform to deliver a mini app ecosystem that users can select on their own for their own personalized app experiences. It leads to building a composable ecosystem where customers and builders of the super apps must create value for their own customers, partners, employees, and having a reason to participate in that ecosystem. A couple of examples that come up. I know the go-to is WeChat and Alipay in China, where everything is done through those apps, but a new contender I want to mention is Tata New in India. Now, Tata is a well-known company, and Tata New allows seven plus million customers to buy everything from groceries to flights to fitness programs to loans and make payments. They're gonna roll out loyalty rewards with things called new pass and new coins. And most importantly, they're open to having non-Tata brands on the platform in the future so they provide a great experience for their customers. Now, interest is growing in Western nations and in descending order from the UK to US to Germany to Australia. And the US, we see intra-company apps jumping onto this as well, with the key example being Me at Walmart. The Me at Walmart app brings together personal and work information of over 2 million Walmart associates out there. Now this app allows employees, users to manage their work schedule, request time off, swap shifts with other employees, or take COVID-19 health assessments, and a lot more. 
So while we're seeing Asian nations really driving out, grabbing onto this from a consumer standpoint, in the West, that's slowly increasing with fintech companies and healthcare kind of leading the charge, but we're still seeing it much more from an internal app or an MDM point of view. Typical use cases for super apps, we think of it like a Swiss army knife with many tools that serve multiple purposes. You can combine disparate applications, like we're gonna talk about their logistics company. You can enable an all-in-one experience so that everybody has one place to go where they know they can find their services and goods that they wanna use. And like Tata New showed, they can add new verticals with partner companies as time goes on. Now, what makes a super app a super app? This is super important and we're just gonna dive into it with our logistics company. The first part of it is that there will be a shell application. When I say shell application, this owns the core features that we have of the application. That means by itself with no mini apps in there, that shell app still provides some value to the customer. It needs to be uh, simple enough that they can use, maybe provide some notifications, login support, basic profile retrieval, but it has to have something in that shell application. Now, to add on to that, mini apps enable additional functionality. Now these mini apps are loaded dynamically. The mini apps live and function without needing to know what's happening in the super app shell. Um, and that typically grows over time as well. What's important is that the user activates the mini apps, not the shell app pushing it onto the user themselves. What that means is that the user has a sense of discoverability with these mini apps. They can search, they can add it themselves, and they can remove it at their will. And then lastly, between the shell app and the mini app, it's super important that data can be shared seamlessly between those layers. Meaning if a customer logs in on the shell app and they launch a mini app to go buy some groceries, they don't need to re-enter their credentials or get their preferences over. Their profile flows with them into those mini apps. So that's an important characteristic of having a super app. Okay, let's pause there for a second. I'm curious to find out from the audience, how many of you are currently using or considering super apps for your organization? Take a look at the poll and let us know where you stand. Super fascinating to find out the architecture of what our customer did. What we see is that their app shell is built using native SDKs. So there's a single app team, a single native app team that sets the boundaries and rules for the mini app. They have their own DevOps pipe in order to build the native shell and distribute it. And in our case, uh, with our logistics company, using Java on Android and Swift for iOS. So this single application is in charge of a lot of functionality um, that we'll talk about in just a little bit. The mini apps happen to be built with Ionic. So each mini app team has their own repository, their own branches like dev primary release, and they're using their workflows in order to release their mini apps asynchronously and autonomously out to the super app. The customer is also leveraging Ionic's mobile CICD offering, which is called AppFlow, in order to update and really load their users' mini apps on their devices with a, with a hot swapping feature we call live updates. So this allows the mini app teams to move really quickly and they're expected to have these mini app releases every one to two weeks uh, with new features and fixes. Lastly, I don't wanna just let this go. That was all the front end work. On the back end side, they are leveraging AWS Amplify for pretty much all their services. From an organizational standpoint, there's a single native app team that again, they set the boundaries and rules and they own core functionality like single sign-on and notifications and the basic native navigation of the app. There are multiple app mini app teams, we're talking 20 plus, uh, that they own their own individual separate section. And within those sections, they work completely autonomously. They're building Ionic apps that get deployed and the native shell or the native team doesn't know what mini apps are gonna be coming down the line. So they're working totally independently of each other. That's super important to understand. Now the outcome, what are we looking at? What is this super app going to be? Well, here's an example of it. Uh, we've blurred out some customer details, but you can tell that they have mini apps that are loaded. They have a connection to SAP, to Salesforce, to Tableau. And now they have a single app with multiple mini apps that can be loaded uh, by the user or by their role. They expect to scale to 20 plus mini apps by the end of the year. 
And with that, they can gradually phase out each of those seven or eight old apps in the app store. So we had a customer who had a real problem with disparate apps in the app store for various personas. If you've ever gone in to try to download, uh, for example, maybe an airline application and you see multiple instances of it, you don't know which one to grab. I've run into this just last week myself. It can be a real problem and a super app is a way to solve that. We talked a lot about super apps, but let's quickly touch on what is not a super app. Now, I like to classify these as either, you know, you think of them as customer portals or modular applications or composite applications. What's usually missing from these apps are that they don't have standalone mini apps. That means these apps could exist on their own. Maybe they do in, in on their website or their web app, but these should be, lo- be able to be loaded by customers and removed by customers as well, users of the app. And that kind of leads to the user discovery and activation piece. So some examples I've seen are customers who decide that, you know, we're going to roll out an app that adds new features over time, that each feature is in fact kind of like a mini app, but they push that update out. It becomes a part of the the shell experience, overall experience, and it can't be loaded or removed by users. So not having those for me means that they don't classify as a super app. Uh, Another example I see are portals, where it's just kind of a come here, table of contents, and then choose your adventure where you go. Those are not exactly super apps, um, but I think over time with their integration gets well, the standalone apps are nice, and the users can discover and activate their own, those portals could become more valuable uh, over time. Okay, we've talked a lot about super apps. Now, what I think is super fascinating is that Gartner and many other analyst agencies really think that 2023 is gonna be the year of super apps. And creating a viable super app gives you a first mover advantage in an industry, where you could be the center of your ecosystem, but you need to ask yourself, are you willing to make an investment that push that multi-year plan? And do you have the right integrations and partners to make that ecosystem work? Or if you're a small, medium-sized business, should you consider jumping into one of these super app ecosystems? Because you could participate and get just as much value instead of making your own super app ecosystem. So with that, I thank you for, for your time. 